Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful God. Awesome God. Powerful God. I'm so glad that today the Sunday School has addressed some of the things that we're going to be discussing today in the service. It applies to all. So I don't want you to think that the, the message is addressed to parents alone. No. It's addressed to parents. It's addressed to young people. It's addressed to grannies. People who maybe their children are now married. You will have grandchildren. So it still applies to you. It's addressed to people whose children are still coming. So it also applies to you. And it addresses every one of us because we can be there for a child. We all come in contact with children. So it applies to everyone sat here today and everyone listening to the sound of my voice. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. I'm going to be reading from verse 1 to 8. Listen, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth and be willing to learn. I will open my mouth in a parable to instruct using examples. I will utter dark and puzzling sayings of old that contain important truth, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, but we will tell to the generation to come the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord and tell of his great might and power and the wonderful works that he has done. For he established the testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded to our fathers, that they should teach to their children the great facts of God's transactions with Israel, that the generation to come might know them, that the children still to be born may arise and recount them to their children, that they should place their confidence in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments and not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not prepare its heart to know and follow God and whose spirit was not faithful to God. First Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians chapter six. I'll be reading from verse 12 to 18. From verse 12 to 18. Everything is permissible for me, but not all things are beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything and brought under its power, allowing it to control me. Food is for the stomach and the stomach for food, but God will do away with both of them. The body is not intended for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body to save, sanctify, and raise it again because of the sacrifice of the cross. And God has not raised, has not only raised the Lord to life, but will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Am I therefore to take the members of Christ and make them part of a prostitute? Certainly not. Do you not know that the one who joins himself to a prostitute is one body with her, for he says, the two shall be one flesh. But the one who is united and joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Run away from sexual immorality in any form, whether thought or behavior, whether visual or written. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body. But the one who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word to us in Jesus' name. So today, by the grace of God, I'm going to be talking on the first part 
of a teaching I've titled Protecting Your Child's Sexuality. Protecting Your Child's Sexuality. So I said at the start that this message covers every single person sat here. So the scripture we've read even refers to unborn generations, children who are yet to be born, that they will also know what God has for them. You know, the thing about sex and sexuality is it's not so much talked about in the church. And it is something that was created by God. It belongs, the idea belongs to God. But the enemy likes to perverse everything that has to do with God. Anything that is God's, he wants to adulterate, he wants to pollute, he wants to perverse. That's his job. Because he just wants to inflict maximum pain on God. Because he knows God loves his creatures, whether saved or unsaved. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus died for the world, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. So he loves the world, every person in it. And the word of the Lord also says that while we were yet sinners, Romans 5, 5, Christ died for us. So his love is for all. His love is for all. God loves us all. But then, one of the tactics, the main tactics, one of it that God has is to recruit children. God likes to recruit children because when a child is set in a certain way, there is a high likelihood that that child will not deviate from it. And I said a certain way, so it doesn't matter, good or bad. That's why suicide bombers, they prefer children, young people that they can deceive, that they can bend their minds, children who are amenable, children who are naive, they prefer them because they will accept anything. They will believe anything. And psychologists have said to us that children are born with a clean slate, kind of like a, a blackboard. Nothing is written on it. So every child, whatever is coming out of that child, is what that child has been exposed to. Amen. When you see a child displaying certain traits, it's what that child has been exposed to. If a child is rude, mannerless, it is what that child has been exposed to. If a child is well trained and brought up, it is what that child has been exposed to. If a child has resentment and bitterness, it is what that child has been exposed to. So children are so, they're gullible. Whatever we put into them is what they produce. So God wants to grab them quickly. So Proverbs 22, 6 tells us, train up a child, a child in the way he should go, she should go. Isaiah 9, 6 also tells us, for unto us a, a son is born, a child is born, a son is given. It tells us that there is a process. So a child has to grow to the point of sonship. It's not enough for a child to just remain a child or a person to remain a child. There is a process that brings that child to a, a, a maturity, where that child now becomes a son. Galatians chapter 4 also tells us that as long as the heir is a child, he's not different from a slave because the father expects that child to grow, to walk to maturity. So God is so invested in children, so invested in children. The Psalms, Psalm that we read, Psalm 78, talks about how God told them, tell these things to your children. You know, when I'm emphasizing things like this in church at the weekly prayer meeting about parents taking time to invest in their children, it's because of what the word of the Lord says. If a child is not quickly grabbed for the Lord, there is no middle ground. There is none. There is none. No demilitarized zone. It's either you are for the Lord or you are for the devil. There is no moralist. There's nothing like that. 
The Bible says in Psalm 78, in verse 3, it says, Which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. How do we know these things? Our fathers told us. Our mothers told us. Verse 4 says, We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the generation to come the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord and tell of his great might and power. And continues like that in verse 5. It says that they should teach their children. Verse 6, that the generation to come might know them, that the children still to be born may arise and recount them to their children. So God expects the, the teachings about him, his ways. If you are a Christian, you call yourself a believer, you must pass it on to the next generation. It's kind of like a relay race. If you're not passing it on, your salvation is questionable. How can you say you are going to heaven, preparing for heaven, and you don't care where your children end? You are wicked. You don't have Christ. And I'm not sorry to say it. It's the word of the Lord. Because if you know what is at stake, if you really call yourself a believer who is serious about the, the, the kingdom to come, you will prepare your children for where you're preparing to go to. So sexuality. You find children are misguided. African parents staying away from the topic and exposing children to whatever nonsense is told them or fed them out there. The importance of guiding or training, a, or training children in life cannot be overemphasized. Children who are trained are the ones with the capability of training the next generation. They are the ones who have the capability, the ability, the tenacity, the boldness and the courage to pass it on to the next generation. No child has the ability to train him or herself. No, none. I don't care what your child is like. You have to train that child. No child has the ability to train him or herself. They have to be corrected. When a child is misbehaving and has bad behaviors, the parents have the responsibility to correct it. I said it one day here that, you know, as a child growing up in a polygamous house, my mom would tell me things that the other mothers did to her. And she didn't know that she was sowing bitterness in me. And when I see the, the, the person that she is, she's offended with, I won't greet to the person, a child, to an adult. Because that's what she sowed in me. And I said it to parents, yeah, if you have issues with another adult, don't pour it on your children. You're destroying that child's life. You're bringing your child into a battle that she, he or she has no business fighting. David did it. When he was about to die, he told Solomon, you know she may. She may. He mustn't go to the grave alive. I think it's First Kings chapter 2 or thereabout. You must kill him. Joab offended me. He too must not go to the grave alive. He passed on battles to his son. The plan of God for Solomon was to live a battle-free life. But the bitterness, what he could not do, he gave it to the son. And you see parents gossiping other adults with their children. I pity you. You sow what you reap. I mean, you reap what you sow. The other way around. One of the many areas where a child requires training is in their sexuality. Is in their sexuality. Sex is not a taboo. And you see, the thing is, it is 10 for a P now. 10 for one P. I heard that somewhere in Nigeria you can download an app. You don't even go to, you, know, you don't need to go to red light zones. Just download it on your phone. I need a lady tonight. I need a man tonight. Or if it's the same gender and they will drop, the person will come to, to wherever you are. See the perversion? You see what the enemy is doing? You see what the enemy is doing? Exposing young people to the wrong things about sexuality. Sexuality has to do with everything 
that has to do with sex in the life of a child or a person. Parents, don't shy away from it. If you've got children, tell them, sit them down. Talk to them, teach them according to their level. If you don't know this thing, go get training, buy books, get books on the internet. It's so sad that the people from our own culture, people that look like me, we just want things to fall on our laps. We don't want to exert ourselves. We don't want to expend energy. We just want things to turn out well. How is that possible? How is that going to happen? You don't want to do any work. You just want your child to turn out good. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You've got to do the work. For those who have degrees, you know what you did before you qualified to get that degree. You know you're proficient in that field because you did something. If you did not do anything, do you think you'll be proficient? Do you think people would want you where you are right now? Parenting is not different. Protecting your child's sexuality. In my findings, I discovered that the age of the loss of innocence now is 12. 12. A child can lose his or her innocence now from the age of 12. You see children age 12 having sex. 12. There was a Zoom meeting I was part of. Was it two, three years ago? And somehow these people, they just, you know, hijacked the meeting. And they started showing pornography and if it had stopped at that then you know I'll just take my eyes off and let the people the organizers of the program sort their thing out and continue with the program so the line wasn't secure so they were able to cut through to it but the sad thing about it was the people involved or where the people involved children a girl of maybe about eight and a boy of about nine Sleeping with each other. I could, I just, it broke my heart. And I was thinking, where are their parents? Where are the parents of these ones? And you know, the thing is, children suffer sexual abuse more from children. More from children. Not from adults. Adults do it too. But more from children. I don't know if that shocks you. Yes. Children abuse other children sexually. More than adults abuse children sexually. So why do we need to protect our, ch our children's sexuality? There are dangers in opening the doorway of sex outside marriage. There are dangers inherent there. Dangers. That's why I said this teaching is for everybody. There are dangers there. First Corinthians chapter 6 that we read, verses 16 and 17, tells us a few things there. Do you not know that the one who joins himself to a prostitute is one body with her? For he says the two shall be one flesh. Now what this means, you, know, you see when the Bible refers to prostitutes or harlots, harlots simply are people who move from one person to the other. As we know prostitutes, yeah? Prostitutes, they have multiple people sleep with them. And when the Bible also refers to it, a person who goes around worshipping different gods and who is with God today is with another one tomorrow, that person is a prostitute in the eyes of God, in case you don't know. So there is the physical prostitute and there is the spiritual prostitute. A person who moves around is Jesus today, tomorrow is uh, Amadioha, the next one is Oloku, the next one, they're just moving, moving, moving. 
they are prostitutes. Now, if a person enters into sex outside marriage, they are opening doors to dangers. Your children need to know. And I'm not referring to girls. The Bible refers to both genders, boys and girls. Children need to know. Now, what are some of the dangers? The first one, every family has got negative ancestral patterns. And sex is the easiest way Satan can perpetuate his desires in a person's life. Every single person. I don't care if your parents were pastors or your grandparents were pastors. Somewhere along the line, you have unbelievers as ancestors. And those people, if they did not give their lives to Christ, carried the sins that is known to man. Everyone who is born into this world is a sinner. Now, the enemy also knows that if I want to perpetuate a particular pattern in a family, I just keep it there. I don't need to, you know, rewrite the story. I don't need to fix what is not broken. If in this family, what he's learned to plague them with is adultery, you will find out that in that family, adultery is common. If it's in the family where women are the one who feed men, you will find out if you take time to do your studies, you will find it in that family. If it is a family where sickness, maybe they get to a certain age, you know, before that age, everybody is fine. But they get to a certain age, sickness must happen. He dishes it out. Some families, the women never get married. They don't stay. They don't stay. Or the men, they don't stay. They give birth everywhere. They sow seeds everywhere. But you need to know the pattern of your family. So when something is in a family, the enemy doesn't reinvent the wheel. He just keeps it going. Because to start all over again would take him too much time. So he just continues. So the easiest way he can perpetuate that evil pattern is through sex outside of marriage. So a person comes to Christ, yes, Christ has saved you, good. <laughs> Make sure you stay within the confines of his, of his territory. Stay where he asked you to stay. The moment you step out, you've just opened the door to the enemy to afflict. And the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. God, this one has stepped out. So you know the deal. And God is righteous. He won't say, ah, no, you can't do it. No, he's righteous. He's just. Even to Satan, he's just. He's just. Say, ah, well, he that breaks the edge. The serpent will bite, so, so, okay. Carry on. So sex is the easiest way of perpetuating it by the enemy. Sex. And it's not about, well, I ended up marrying the person uh, I slept with for the first time. Was it outside marriage? Because if it was outside marriage, you've opened the door. You've opened the door. They need to know different things that can happen if a person steps out. Or if the parent was a multiple or proficient in sexual activities before marriage. Every single time that a person engages in sex outside of marriage, even if it's the same person, every single time the enemy is doing something. Now, if it has to do with multiple partners, ah, the enemy is doing some things that need to be broken. So children have to be taught, hey, you don't need that stress. Just stay with Jesus. You won't, there are some battles you won't fight. Some battles. As parents, you know the battles you are facing. <laughs> 
So if you know what you're struggling with, why don't you prepare your child and say, don't do what I did. Don't do it. Let me prepare you. Let me sit you down and, in, and teach you and instruct you and let you know the dangers out there. The other thing then of why we need to speak to our children about sexuality in terms of dangers out there is the dangers of STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. I'm not going to go into details. Another one is to prevent unwanted pregnancies, which could lead to termination of pregnancies. You see, the thing is, Oftentimes they'll say women are the ones who terminate pregnancies, men are not involved. If you encourage the girl to terminate the pregnancy, you also terminated pregnancy in the eyes of God. There's not one person. And if you say, well, my opinion is, <laughs> opinion is one of the cheapest commodities of life. Everybody can afford it. Everybody can afford opinion. It's very cheap. But your opinion doesn't count. It is the word of God that counts. They can say, my opinion on that is actually my opinion. Continue with your opinion. A girl who engages in termination of pregnancy, if a man encourages it, that man too has engaged in it. The children have to be taught to know, and there are consequences. Go do your research, because I'm not going to, you know, give it all to you you've got to do your research teach them about the dangers of keeping themselves pure or themselves pure so that they will it will prevent having children outside wedlock or children growing up with an absent parent because the parent is not interested or the father has refused the pregnancy or the father says i'm not the one go look for the father Another one which is so key is their mental well-being. We saw it today in the Sunday school. Children who have been abused or engaged in sexual activities outside of marriage, different things happen to them. Different things. Some of them are not balanced. Some of them now become promiscuous. Hey, anybody that says come, they will go. Because they've lost their sense of worth. They don't see themselves as important and, and to be valued anymore. They, they, they see themselves as dirty and useless. So any man says, come, they go. Or some, they become so mean that they would deal with people. There are different signs. Now, in, 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 in a person's mind, a person may be saying, oh, well, me, as a young person, I'm not committing sex outside marriage. But your own may be pornography, masturbation, sex toys. If you're engaging in it, you're committing sin. And the person you are playing with is not playing with you. Satan is his name. He's mm, not playing with you. He's digging a hole for you. And the thing about pornography is, whether man or woman, because there's no difference. Sin is sin. You know, there's so much um, emphasis placed on girls, that the girls are the ones to keep themselves. Everybody ought to. The word of the Lord doesn't say only girls. Boys too. So it's not just the girls that have to be taught. The boys also have to be taught. To keep themselves pure. Their sexuality untarnished. You see boys now, sometimes you see boys, they're almost useless. Because the parents are focusing on the girls. And you see boys, it's as if they can just live anyhow. And that one is going to be someone's husband one day. God forbid. Never. You won't marry.
marry my daughter. No, because God will give his princess to a prince. He's not going to give her to a riffraff. Water will always find its level. I was saying to some people that, you know, you know, they're saying, you know, we need to, you know, sometimes these children, somehow, somehow, something will just happen, and then they end up with somebody that they should not. I say, yeah. If a person is facing this direction, and another is facing that direction, and they keep going, each one of them keeps going, they can never meet. That is what the training will do. Part of what it will do. The sexuality training will help them know and be able to fish out and sort out the riffraffs, girls, boys. Pornography. It's so easy now. People even have it on their phones. They can be in church. They have pornography on their phone. They are engaging in it. I heard the story of a, 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 a person in church who, the way he gets his release is to hug sisters. Once he hugs sisters, he will just release and quickly go clean himself up. What would you, what do you want to call that? When he marries now, what would then happen to the sexual relationship between him and his wife? Because, you see, the enemy doesn't stop at eh, just one now. No, he wants the whole thing. So he usually starts small. He starts small. It's, it's harmless. There's nothing wrong with it. And sadly, even in the church, a lot of people are watching pornography. Adults and young people alike. Me, I'm not deceived. Mm -mm. No. People are engaging in pornography in the church. Masturbation in the church. is rife in the church. Even married people. Yes. Even married people. So you may be saying, me, I know. Me, I'm not sleeping with anybody. But you're masturbating. You're watching pornography. And the Bible says in Psalm 78 that the fathers have to pass it on. Pass it on. Protecting one's, a child's sexuality. I remember as a child, my dad had this picture in his bedroom. And under it, it, wrote, it, it was written, French kiss. And they showed two people sticking out their tongues and kiss, kissing each other in his bedroom. And when my siblings and I would go into his bedroom, we will be looking at the picture, analyzing it. What do we have in our homes? Defiling our children. I remember when my uncle as well, my mom's younger br brother, brought home a, a, a VHS tape. It was pornography. So one day I just came back from school. I was in primary school and I just put it in. I wanted to watch a movie. And I was watching pornography. And the thing that it would do to you, it, it gives, it sends, you see, when a child loses his or her innocence, when they should not lose it, I'll read it out to you. Innocence will eventually be lost but it should not come as a result of death. Innocence should be lost at the right time. So a girl, a boy preserves themselves and they get married. Innocence will be lost. It is allowed. But when it is not time, it disturbs the natural order. The death of innocence causes an imbalance and initiates an internal war that manifests differently in each individual, but almost always includes anger, withdrawal, and severe depression. So we, we heard the signs today, children who have been exposed, their sexuality have been tampered with, unexplained changes in behavior or personality, becoming withdrawn, seeming anxious, Becoming uncharacteristically aggressive. Can you see that? Anger. 
lacks social skills, has few friends, if any at all, evidence of a low self-esteem, and on and on. You can look through it in your Sunday school manual. I'm still talking of why we need to protect our children and their sexuality. There are some movies that me, I'm in my 40s, I can't watch it. And they rate it 12. But me, I can't watch. Because it's impure. And I'm thinking to myself, you mean the film board says children can watch this? And some of us parents, we don't check. We don't, we don't, we don't even ask questions. We don't, we know. Oh, you want to watch that? What are you watching? Oh, ah, boyfriend, girlfriend. Hey. Or some of us even sit down and watch it with the children. Hey, and he likes him more. And she likes him more. You don't know you are rubbing something off the life of that child. I can watch. Our children know it's a law. If it's PG, parental guidance, they'll come and ask, Mommy, please, we want to watch it. Daddy, please, please watch it so that we can know if we can watch it. We'll tell them, okay, okay, when we watch it, we'll let you know. Because they are not society's children. No, they are Adeyemi and Banke Ajayi's children. So society would not tell me or tell my husband how to raise our children. What we can do is what we ought to do. That is what the Lord expects of us. But not to do anything is callous. It's callous as a parent. We don't ask questions. We don't, we don't do anything. And these children are exposed. I'm still talking of the dangers in opening the doorway of sex outside marriage. So sex is not just... You know, when you penetrate or do things, even if you get the satisfaction, dictionary meaning you are committing it. Even according to the word of God, you are still doing it. Because Jesus said, if you just look, you didn't touch you. All you did was just looked and you imagined. You've done it. You've done it. It's the same thing. Now, lastly, I'm going to talk about the innocence and purity. Why should we protect our children's sexuality? And I'll, I'll wrap up. Their innocence and purity are key to fulfilling their destinies. Romans 16, verse 19. Romans chapter 16, verse 19. For the report of your obedience has reached everyone, so that I rejoice over you. But I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. What does it mean to be innocent? It's the complete absence of error and regret and all the anxieties that go with this. You know, if, if two children were playing here now, maybe a boy and a girl, say they're one or two or even three, as long as they've not been tampered with, if in the course of playing, the boy, you know, they're rolling on the floor and maybe the boy is on top of the girl and they're laughing, what would adults do? What would adults do? Stop it! Stop it! Leave, leave them! Stop it! You are tampering with the innocence of the, the, the children. It's your own mind that is dirty. They don't know anything. So in their mind they are thinking, oh, 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 you mean laying this way or lying on? And they are wondering and they now begin to grow curious and inquisitive. Mm. Ah, okay. That is why we need to learn. We need to learn. 
I don't want to be saved. I don't want to be saved. Children, you are innocent. It's your mind that needs fairy. Or whatever product you use to wash your dishes at home. They are pure. Matthew chapter 6, 22 and 23. Matthew 6, 22 and 23. The Lord Jesus was saying something there. He was talking about the eyes. Hmm. Pornography. But if your eye, or the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is clear, spiritually perceptive, your whole body will be full of light, benefiting from God's precepts. But if your eye is bad, spiritually blind, your whole body will be full of darkness, devoid of God's precepts. So if the very light inside of you, your inner self, your heart, your conscience is darkness, how great and terrible is that darkness. I watched a, 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 a movie, a Christian movie. A woman brought her child to another woman and said, please, I need to go to the market. Her father is not around. Neighbor, please help me look after my child. This girl was maybe around six. And this man had a son who was maybe 18. So the woman was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Her son also was at home. And during the course of the day, the woman said, oh, uh, let's name him Jack. Jack, I need to go get something quickly from, from the supermarket. Uh, stay with, uh, let's say, uh, Selena. Before his mother returned, he had abused the girl. He had raped her. What is that boy feeding on? Because these are the reasons why we need to let them know. We need to let them know. He raped her before his mom returned. Not to talk of the mom of the girl. And rape can be any form. But today is not the day. Innocence. A child's simplicity. Their lack of knowledge. Their purity. Not yet spoiled. By mundane affairs. Pure. Clean. No stain. Like Adam and Eve before the fall. The Bible says they were naked. They were just going about naked. They were pure. Nothing sinful. Their minds were clean. Until sin came. And then you see. That's why when you and I sin. Before I got the understanding. What would we do? That's when we would now forget God. And say God. Ah, God doesn't like me anymore. It's the natural state. Yes, because Adam and Eve ran away from God. Uh, no, no, let's go and hide. Loss of innocence is an experience or period in a person's life that leads to a greater awareness of evil, pain, and or suffering in the world around them. It's an experience or period in a person's life that leads to a greater awareness. So the eye has opened so you hear people say about some children, ah, yeah, I don't open, no. Eyes are open, open. It shows that that child is way older than their years. And do you know that thing is disgusting? I don't know for you, but it's actually disgusting for me. A child should be a child. And sometimes for parents, we are the ones sexualizing them. You see parents when they have girls, hey, I don't born girl, oh. So all the things that they can no longer do, because if they wear those clothes, people will say, ah, uh ah, -uh, auntie, if this thing for children now, they will not put it on their girls. So you see girls wearing bum shorts. You see a child using makeup. A child exposing the tummy. But the boys are covered up. And you see girls in short clothes. Why now? But, well, they're losing their innocence. Let that child be a child. Let them wear the long gowns. Let them wear it. I'm wrapping up on examples of losing innocence. 
watching porn, masturbating, allowing access to one's body. So touch, touch on the shoulder, hands, thighs, back, both genders. I'm not referring to females. So anyone who has not lost their innocence, when you touch them, they react as, ah, don't touch me. Don't, don't touch me. Don't, don't try it again with me. Yes, we need to teach them. The other day I was taking my daughter to school last week and her brother. And we got to a set of traffic lights. And as is expected, there are other cars on the road. And as we moved, she said to me, Mommy, the man in that car stuck his tongue out at me. I said, what did he do? She said, he did this. I said, eh. And then she said, next time, what do I do? Her brother was already saying, he was only playing with you, so next time you to just stick out your tongue at him. I was going to say that. And then I thought to myself, eh, if I tell her you to stick out your tongue, the day they want to do worse, he said, mommy said they are just playing with me. Mommy said he's playing with me. I said, when, he, when anybody does that, you just face your front. Ignore them. Don't mind them. You just turn away from them. Don't smile. Just turn away from them. Yes, because uncle will come one day and in something else, ah, mommy said they are playing with me. Mommy said it's, it's play. It's play. It's not play. No, it's not. And they need to know. We're talking about protecting our children's sexuality. Once innocence is lost, it can never be regained. Mm. Examples of losing innocence. Killing a person. Pregnancy, outside marriage. Termination of pregnancy is loss of innocence. Loss. And that's why this message applies to us all. It's not cool. Even for us as parents, to engage in things that our children may pick up, it's not cool. So I've talked about the reasons why we need to protect our children's sexuality. Next week, by the grace of God, I'm going to be talking about how, how and when to protect their sexuality. Sex is not a taboo. Don't let your, your people out there teach your children. Sit them down yourself and teach them. Bring out the word. Teach them. If you're struggling in any area, go to the Lord. Go for counseling. Go for therapy. In this field that I'm in, I'm yet to see an Afro-Caribbean person come for therapy. Because we expect that, you know, the therapist will just do one thing and then it will just happen. It took you years to be where you are. So therapy too takes time. So people expect, oh, the therapist will just, you know, just do something and everything will just align, realign. No, 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 no. Our people, hmm, don't see them. We don't read. We don't look for information. As our four, 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 four fathers have been doing it, we continue. I want us to talk to the Lord this afternoon. It's not a sensitive topic. I do not agree with that. It's not. It has to be said. Fathers, take your place. Mothers, take your place. Those of you who still have very young children, take your place. Take your place. I want us to pray for mercy. Mercy. For some of us, we abused other people's children. We've abused children left in our care. Maybe a neighbor's child. Some of us, we've exposed ourselves to sexual immorality. Let's ask God for mercy. So that our children will not inherit this. And needless to say that there are prayers to be prayed. So that the children don't pick it up as well in their own time. 
A father who has abused other people's children, if you don't deal with it in prayers and uproot things you've done, restitute your ways, hey, your child is waiting too, to be a victim. Or you are someone who are prolific in morality before marriage. Your children somehow, somehow, if you don't deal with it, the enemy is coming for them. I told you, he comes for children. He's coming. Father, please have mercy. And if you are engaging in masturbation, pornography, the Lord can set you free. Jesus is the only one who has the power to. He's the only one. And the thing about sin is that it thrives in secrecy. As long as you keep covering it, it will continue to gain grounds. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 28, 13, he who covers his sin will not prosper. But the one who confesses it and forsakes it is the one who will receive mercy. As long as you keep keeping out, God, please forgive me. I've prayed for forgiveness today. Expose it. Tell someone that you, that you know will not make fun of you and spread it to the world. And ask for deliverance. And lastly, we're going to pray for our children. Father, be merciful to our children. I pray that our children will not walk in the errors of us as, as their parents. In the mighty name of Jesus. That our children will not suffer the same fate that has led to regret in our own lives as parents. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, please have mercy on our children. The things our children ought to be propagating and carrying on from us is righteousness, prosperity, increase. Things ought to be easier for them. Lord, please have mercy on our children. Have mercy, Lord. Oh, have mercy. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. And so, Father, I just want to thank you for this time. I give you praise for choosing to speak to us this way. Help us, Lord, to live by this word. Help us, O oh God, to engage in the activities that are required of us as parents in protecting the sexuality of our children. I pray as well for young people here or anybody at all who is committing sin, sexual sin. I ask, O oh God, for mercy. And I ask, Father, that this one's will have the boldness to cry out to you and seek help wherever it is needed in the name of Jesus. For our children, I pray that their generation shall be far, far better than ours in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. In Jesus' name, I pray.